Long legs and a long beak are what characterize the curlew. The bird also happens to be Great Britain's largest native wader, and he usually feels especially at home in landscapes like those in the New Forest. They need soft mud to probe their beaks down into. So the area we're in now um, has got that sort of wet areas where, where the mud is quite peaty and quite soft. So they can probe down to get shrimps and worms and, and mollusks. In the New Forest, they basically come in land to breed and they're in heathland here, but they look for the sort of boggy, wet heathland areas. And around here, that's kind of shown up by the, the paler, grassy areas, which is um, a type of purple moor grass. And when you look in the habitat, you can, you can see heather and then it changes to the, these wetter areas. And you just see that subtle change of vegetation and that's where they like to sort of nest and feed. The New Forest curlew population is extremely important and can in some ways be an indicator for the well-being of wildlife in the area. But the bird that is already hard to spot has become a rare guest in these heathlands as its population is dwindling. We've um, recently had a study of curlews in the New Forest and um, in 2016 40 breeding pairs were uh, detected and that's a decline of about two-thirds in only 10 years so uh, really quite worrying because in the um, south of England there's only about 200 pairs in total anyway so the the new forest population is quite an important part of that there could be a couple of reasons basically when they come in land to breed um, the reason we can't really see them is because they're, they're basically sitting on nests on the ground and um, if we were seeing them that would be quite worrying because that meant that we would be disturbing them and the adults were coming off the nests and we basically think in terms of breeding success what's happening is people are enjoying themselves in the forest which is great but when they're coming off of the, the main tracks and going into the different areas particularly if they've got dogs or they're running something like that they're disturbing those adult birds they're flying off the nest and then that leaves the nest open and um, susceptible to predation from things like crows and foxes and then once they've bred they go back onto the coastal areas and the same sort of thing can happen there in that they feed on the mudflats and if they're getting disturbed when they're feeding they're not getting enough calories over winter so that affects the adult birds. So to protect the curlew and also other birds there are some simple guidelines you can follow. We basically have a lot of ground nesting birds, so the, the curlew's really been highlighted because we, we've got those hard figures that say that they're declining, but there are other ground nesting birds here as well. So when you're out and about in the forest, there are a lot of signs up that say about ground, ground nesting birds where we know that they're, they're breeding, and that's everything from tiny little uh, woodlarks right up to, up to the curlew. So in those areas, it's really important to stick to, to main tracks. And it's okay to have your dog off a lead if you've got it under close control, but their dogs need to be on the tracks as well. And I think the main problem is that people walk on the tracks but let their dogs go either side. And those birds uh, basically see the dogs as predators and they're going to get disturbed. So if you see those orange signs, they're very distinct orange signs about ground nesting birds, then really just, just really stick to the tracks in those areas. And basically you can still enjoy the forest and, and the birds will be absolutely fine with you. Nicole Ries for that's TV.